This lesson is all about the commercial refrigeration diagrams. Now, it is a little bit sometimes early in this course to be talking about this, but this is going to help you out with your labs and understanding the sequence of operation as we go through different commercial systems. In this presentation, there's a mixture of slides with um, diagrams on it, schematic diagrams. There is a mixture of description of what's happening on the slide before. And as we go through this, anything in red on the diagrams is currently energized on that diagram. And you'll see what I mean in a few slides. So this is a basic commercial system. Okay, we have a defrost timer motor up here, a defrost time clock. We have our thermostat. We have a low pressure switch, high pressure switch. We have our compressor and the starting components. Might have a start capacitor. Potential relay is here. We have our condenser fan that's attached to a pressure switch for low ambient control. We have an evaporator fan motor and we have a hot gas solenoid for defrost. So with the service switch open or the main switch open, everything is shut off. Notice nothing is energized. Now, what happens, okay, is that the first diagram represents a typical self-contained reach-in box. It's a low temperature system using a hot gas defrost, as I just explained. The compressor is a CSIR motor, capacitor start, induction run. There's a low ambient control that would be used if the condensing unit is installed outside. The run cap is optional. So we close the power switch. Now notice the red on the diagram. The timer motor is energized because that's a line to line are normally closed from pin 2 of the defrost clock, allows our evaporator fan to energize. Our thermostat is calling for cooling. Our pressure switches are closed. So our condenser fan motor, our compressor, um, run and start winding because it's just starting up, is energized. Okay, the potential relay, which is down here at the bottom in the dotted lines, Okay, with the start cap in series with pin 1, 2, and the start winding, that is a brief moment in time. That is only energized as the compressor starts. Okay, so again, at like any fan system, the fan, fan compressor will sequence in parallel. The start cap will pre provide the required torque to the start winding. Okay, now the motor's running. So the biggest difference here is that because the motor is running, 1 to 2 has opened, and again, that's caused by back EMF on pins 2 and 5, which has taken the start capacitor out of the circuit and the start winding is no longer energized. So the system is running as a, it's the induction run part of the CSIR motor right now. Start winding is no longer energized. Okay, so the system is running in a cooling mode. The timer motor, the defrost clock, is starting to time, okay, how long the system is running. So the B back EMF energizes the relay and drops out the start cap. The system will cycle normally on the remote bulb thermostat, which is the TS over on the left side. Okay, now the box temperature reaches 0 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on what this is set at. The compressor, condenser fan, all drops out of the circuit. Now, because it's a commercial box, it's a commercial system, that evaporator fan is going to continue to run. What that does is prevent hot spots in the cooling system. Okay, in that box where we have food, I don't want to have warm spots. I want it to be a uniform temperature, and what we, how we do that is by keeping the evaporator fan running. Okay. When the box temp reaches 0 to 10, the thermostat opens, the evaporator fan, and the defrost time, timer motor, which is TM, continue to run. Okay, box temperature goes back up, thermostat closes, pulls in this bottom part of the circuit again. So it's going to cycle on the thermostat. Now, eventually, the defrost timer will say, okay, I've been running long enough. It is very likely that there's going to be ice built up on the evaporator fan. So the defrost clock opens pin 2, normally closed, and closes 
pin to normally open, energizing the hot gas solenoid. Okay, we leave, we shut off the evaporator fan when the hot gas solenoid is op is energized, and we leave everything else running. Okay, what this is doing, and I'll show you this in a few slides. What this is doing is saying, okay, we're gonna pipe hot gas from the discharge line of the compressor to the evaporator to melt any ice off of it, but I do not want to blow that heat around the, around the box and the heat and humidity. That's why I shut off the evaporator fan motor. Okay, we just want to melt the coil. We do not want to melt everything inside that freezer. Okay, so when the timer switch switches to defrost, the compressor stays on and the HGS, which has hot gas solenoid, energizes. The evaporator fan motors de-energized and defrost. So what's going on here on a refrigeration side is this is normal cooling, okay? We come through our compressor to our condenser to our metering device and back to the evaporator. That's normal cooling. Now, when we go into defrost, this solenoid opens and we, from the compressor, we pipe the hot gas, the superheated vapor, back to the evaporator. And then we just loop it through the evaporator or the compressor. What that does is it sends pure hot gas, and this is over 100 degree gas, to the evaporator, which very quickly melts the ice off of it. Notice we're bypassing the condenser and the metering device. Okay, so again, Diagram B here is now a little bit different, okay? The prior diagram was hot gas. Remember this one? We have a hot gas solenoid. Now, we're going to change this a little bit. We no longer have hot gas. We have electric defrost. Right here, DH is a defrost heater with a high limit. Whenever we have a defrost heater I have that's electric, I have to have a high limit to prevent overheating. The other thing we have here is we have an automatic um, shutting off the de evaporator fan and we have an automatic, once the temperature of the coil is hot enough, DTT returns the system to normal operation. Okay, DTT does two things. It provides a fan delay to make sure the coil is cool enough before the fan starts and it also provides a defrost termination that says, okay, it's warm enough, there's no longer any ice allowed left on the coil, so I'm going to take it back into defrost, or into normal operation out of defrost. So let's take a look at how this works. Okay, um, let's get back, okay. So the system is also low temp, but using electric defrost. This type of system has an evaporator fan delay sequence. It uses two DTT type controls. It has the ability to disengage the timer out of defrost. Okay, system is running in normal operation. Notice the temperature is down, it's cool, my evaporator fan is running. The timer motor is also running, continually clocking the time the system is powered. Okay, just like glass system, fan, fan, and compressor are running. The DTC timer is line to line, like the last system. But we use a different type DTC. Notice the extra terminals on the timer. The device between 3 and X is a solenoid. So if I go back and take a look at this last pin, 3 and X. This little device here is a solenoid. Okay, we'll tell you how that means, how that works in a minute. So system goes into defrost. Okay, we shut off everything. Shut off the EFM, of course, and we shut off the compressor and the condenser. It's no longer hot gas. I don't need the compressor for this defrost sequence. So we open pin 2 to 4 and we close pin 2 to 3. Energizes the defrost heater. So as long as the heater is running and the limit is closed, my coils starting to warm up. Just like the last system, okay, so the only path is through the heater and limit. Everything else is off. The limit acts as a DTT, like the domestic unit, but act, but it has a higher temperature cutout. Okay, it's basically a high temp safety. 
The actual DTT is a single pull double throw just below the limit. And again, my DTT is here. So now this picture, this diagram shows the coils warm. There's no longer any ice on it. Notice the DTT has changed position from being connected down to the EFM. It has warmed up and it is closing the circuit from neutral or line two to the X terminal, providing a path of current through pin three to X to neutral that energizes momentarily that termination solenoid. So if we look at the description, when the single pole double throw DTT senses the evaporator coil is warm enough, it will switch up to the top circuit, completing the path to the clutch or termination solenoid on the defrost time clock. The solenoid will swap the contacts back into refrigeration mode. In other words, there's no waiting for the time delay. We actually force the system back into cooling mode. Okay. Now, the defrost is terminated, so we're back in cooling mode. Two to four is closed, two to three is opened. My compressor is now running, but notice my EFM has not started to run yet. That's because the DTT senses the coil is still warm. Okay, so the evaporator fan has not come on yet due to a warm evaporator coil. When the DTT cools back down, the switch will drop back in and the evaporator fan will restart. The purpose of this control and sequence is to prevent what we consider a hot pull-down situation after the, each defrost cycle. Okay, so this is an example of a hot pull-down. Okay, presently the system is running normally. The system pressures generally for 134A run between 5 and 20 PSI. So we go into defrost. We've shut the compressor off. The heaters are on. Okay, the, the compressor, okay, heats up. The pressures heat up as the coil heats up. The compressor's off. When the defrost is terminated, the extreme heat load on the coil could cause an overload on the electrical circuit and trip a breaker, delaying the EFM, evaporator fan motor, is one way to keep the pressures down at initial startup. Allows that coil to cool down a lot faster to prevent the compressor from tripping on high amperage. Okay, the evaporator gets cold. The FM comes back on. Notice, my temperature has dropped. This is, a, this is temperature because you see the little box-shaped line under it. Temperature has dropped. DTT has moved back down to complete the circuit from pin 4 to the evaporator fan back to line 2 or neutral. Okay, DTT is switched into the down position. So like all domestic and commercial automatic defrost circuit, this defrost can be terminated by time and or temperature. The main advantage of this is that the timer, that the refrigeration mode can be brought back instantaneously if the DTT duration exceeded a few minutes. Now, we have a limit in here which is sort of important as well. Okay. If the S single pole double throw DTT should fail, the limit will provide lockout on a condition if an overheating situation will occur. So if for some reason this DTT switch stays in the um, in the defrost condition and something doesn't switch back out of defrost, this limit will prevent the heater from continuously running and melting parts of that coil or overheating and causing a fire. Any time you have an electric defrost, you have to have a limit. Okay, Electric defrost reminders, the element is either on or below the evaporator coil, and the DTT and limit are both located on the evaporator coil. Okay, You can easily see the element on the evaporator coils. Now this is another diagram. Okay, This is basically diagram C you'll notice there's absolutely no defrost components on this. Okay, this is considered um, air defrost. It's for medium temperature boxes where the coil may run below 32 degrees and could get ice, but the um, box temperature is over 32 degrees. In other words, all we have to do is shut off the compressor, keep the evaporator fan running, 
and we should we defrost the evaporator just based on box temperature. Okay, system is a medium temperature application. Evaporator fan is line to line. The defrost cycle simply shuts down the compressor circuit, sometimes done in late evening hours. A simple timer is used. The low pressure switch is used as a temperature control. It's really not the best idea, but it's sort of common. So notice, the EFM is running at all times. The defrost timer motor is running at all times. And instead of a thermostat, we just use a low pressure switch. Okay. To use a low pressure switch as a thermostat, set the LP switch to its recommended settings. Cut in and cut out. Attach your gauges. Place a thermometer in the box and close the door. When the box reaches the desired temperature, set the cut out of the LP switch on to the low pressure side shown on the gauges. Okay, so if I want my box temp to open at um, 20 degree at 20 psi, I also have to set a 30 pound differential, so my cut in will be 50 psi. Higher medium temperature systems uses a off cycle defrost. Off-cycle defrost can be set up by adjusting the LP switch high differential higher than normal. The 30 PSI differential allows sufficient time for defrost. In other words, all we do is shut the compressor off for defrost. We keep the evaporator fan running. Now, as we went through this slide, there's a common theme. Okay, The evaporator fans in commercial systems always run unless it is an electric defrost or a hot gas defrost that is operational. Everything else is always running. So get a copy of these slides, download the handouts, and make sure you actually use these as you go through your lab diagrams. And you can actually use them when you get into the field for reference.